In this video, we're going to talk about the power duration relationship, or how long you can sustain different power outputs, and how it's influenced by the size principle. So first off, let's talk about the power duration relationship. This is something that you've experienced personally, and you have a general feel for what's going on with this. So let's say that you want to do something really intense. Let's say you want to run as fast as you can, full sprint. So really high power. We'll say, we'll say the units on these axes are miles per hour. And the and minutes. These the numbers aren't going to line up perfectly, but uh, just go along with the general trends that I'm illustrating. So let's say that you want to sprint as fast as you can. And let's say you can sprint at about 14 miles per hour. So you want to go at that speed. But how long can you hold a sprint? You know it. You know you can't hold it very long. So we'll just say that like your maximum speed you can hold for about, I don't know, 30 seconds. Now let's say that you want to do like a, like an 800 meter, something pretty fast. Uh, you want to go like at 10 miles per hour at that. And so how long can you sustain it? Not as long, right? So it would be something like down here. But let's now let's look at how long can you sustain uh, walking very slowly. Let's say you want to walk two miles per hour, which is even slower than most of your, your normal gait speeds. How long can you walk for? A really long time. So on the graph here, I'd put it at seven, but really it's probably way out here even farther at like four hours or something, right? You can hold it for a very long time. So intuitively, you know that your endurance is related to how intense you're exercising. If you're going very high powers and very intense, you can't sustain it for very long. But if it's low intensity, you can sustain it for a long time. And so this relationship between power and duration is what we call the power duration relationship. And most of us often think that it's linear like this, uh, where you'll decrease, if you increase your, or decrease your power output by 10%, your endurance will increase 10%. But that's not really how it goes. The power duration relationship, and we'll talk about this a lot this semester, is actually curvilinear, something like this. And you'll learn why that is. Okay, and this, this curvilinear relationship between power and endurance, a lot of it can be described or, or explained by different characteristics of your motor units and how they're recruited or the size principle. So now let's talk about what the size principle is. You have different motor units. Uh, a motor unit, first of all, is a neuron, a motor neuron and all the muscle cells or muscle fibers that it innervates. You have three different kinds in humans, in general, three different kinds. We have type one motor unit, and this is made of a neuron and just a couple of muscle cells. And these muscle cells are smaller, and so they don't generate a lot of power, but they have very high endurance. A lot of mitochondria, a lot of blood go, go into these, so they have very high endurance. Then you have these type, we'll, we'll skip down here to type 2X motor units. These are very large motor units. Every motor unit has just one neuron, but these this neuron in a type 2X system or unit will innervate a lot of muscle cells. So you'll have a lot of these muscle cells and these type 2X muscle fibers will be bigger and stronger. So they're very good at generating high forces and high powers, but the trade-off is that you, they cannot sustain uh, their, those high power outputs for very long. They have very poor endurance. And then you have this type 2A fiber in the middle. This is kind of an intermediate where it has pretty good endurance and pretty good power or strength. And with training and uh, more and more training, that type 2A can get more endurance and more power to be even better than a type 2X. I won't ever have as much endurance probably as a type 1, especially if it's a trained type 1, but those type 2As can get very, very good. All right, so let's look at these this relationship here. So let's say that 
you want to walk two miles per hour. So you want to walk this fast. The first thing you're going to do is recruit a type two or a type one motor unit, also known as a slow twitch motor unit. And if you recruit just one, you, you can see that it can't generate enough power. So you'll have to recruit a second one in addition. So now you have two motor units active and you're hitting that two miles per hour pretty good. All right, so you can walk at two miles per hour by primarily recruiting these, these type one motor units and their endurance can go on for a very long time. All right, I'll leave that there. Now let's say that you wanna go at uh, six miles per hour instead of two. So you wanna go on a jog at like six miles per hour. You can see with your two motor units that you have recruited already, you're not getting the job done. So now you recruit additional type one motor units. And with all your type one motor units, you're not getting there. So now you have to recruit another motor unit, but you don't have any more type ones to recruit. So now you recruit a type two A motor unit, which has pretty good endurance as well. Not quite as good, but pretty good and a high power output. So now we're running around at about six miles per hour. We're using all five of these motor units. Now, one mistake that people often get, they think, or they often make, is thinking that with the, to go six miles per hour in this example, if you have to recruit that type A motor unit, that's the only one you're using. And that's not the case. In order to go at that six miles per hour, you have the type 2A motor unit, but you still are recruiting all those other ones. You almost always, always recruit those type 1 motor units first because they are much better at maintaining homeostasis and having good endurance. All right, so now let's move on. Let's say that you want to go uh, fast. Let's say you want to hit that 14 miles per hour. Now, you clearly can't do that with the five motor units you've recruited so far, so you recruit more. You recruit that type, a second type 2A motor unit, and it's not getting the job done. So now you're getting even more desperate, and you have to recruit your type 2X motor units. You've recruited one type 2X motor unit, and it's not enough to go 14 miles per hour. So now you recruit your final type 2X motor unit. So you have all eight of these motor units going together at once as you're running that fast. Now think about this. If you're going to run 14 miles per hour, how long can you sustain it? Probably not very long, right? So we're looking at 14 miles per hour, but we're relying on all of our motor units, including the type 2X. So we move down here and we could probably only do that speed for about one minute in this example. You can only go a certain speed for as long as you have motor units to do it. And after about a minute, that type 2X motor unit is going to start fatiguing and producing less and less power and you'll be forced to slow down, right? So in this example, we could probably maintain our highest power output, we'll say here, uh, at 17 miles per hour, our highest speed. Now these, these motor units, they don't fatigue all at once, they fatigue gradually. And so instead of this being a square or a rectangle as it's illustrated, it might be even more effective to think of it as more of a triangle. Right, so as you go on, that the power output that that motor unit eight can generate is going to decrease as you use it, and it decreases rather rapidly. Whereas on your slow twitch motor units, you start off with like this much power generated by a slow twitch unit, and as time goes on, their power output really doesn't change all that much. It might it'll go down a little bit as you go for a very long time. Uh, under normal activities, but you don't see nearly as much of a drop in power output or force. They don't fatigue nearly as much. These type 2Xs fatigue quite a bit. Your type 2As will fatigue as well so that their power output might look like something like this over time, whereas the type 2X will give you very little power output as, as it's been active for a while. 
So what happens there is that it influences the power duration relationship. So you can have a really high power output at first, and you can hold this power output like just under your all your type one motor units. You could probably hold that for a really long time because these type one motor units, they don't fatigue very much. So you could go about four miles per hour for a very long time. And then in between, we're gonna see a, relation, a dip, something like this. Not with this bump at the end, but it'll move over like that. And so that's going to influence your ability to sustain different power outputs. Now you might be thinking, well, what if I have a different fiber type distribution? Let's say that you magically convert your, what color is that? Your type 2A motor units into type 1s with lots, and it's not magic, all it takes is lots and lots of endurance training. So all of a sudden this type 2A motor unit now has much greater endurance. So we'll just color this in red. So what that means is that now you could probably sustain five to six miles per hour with almost all type one motor units and have very good endurance. So with endurance training, what happens is you start to accumulate more and more type one motor units. So let's say that now we have our type one motor units going all the way up here, right? So these are all, all slow twitch motor units. That would mean that six miles per hour we could do with almost exclusively type one motor units, which have very high endurance, are great at maintaining homeostasis. So you could hold six miles per hour in this example, you could hold that for a very long time. But let's, what if it went the other way? What if you detrained and one of the things that happens with detraining is that you start to see a conversion of your type 2X or type 2A fibers into type 2X. So we have our type 2X before, before like detraining or anything. And then let's say that you're an astronaut and you get sent to outer space and you're in microgravity for a really long time. And what's going to happen is that this sixth motor unit will convert over to being a type uh, 2x motor unit. And now this is all the power output that you can generate, and this part doesn't count. So that means that if before going into outer space, you could probably hold nine miles per hour here. You could probably hold it for about four minutes. But now that we've converted this sixth motor unit into a type 2x, you can hold that nine miles per hour probably only for about one minute or so, right? So changing the fiber types of your muscle cells and your motor units strongly influences your endurance. And that is how the power duration relationship is related to the size principle.